एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एस पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम So welcome to the second part of the video. So in first part of the video, we have learned how to calculate residue of any function, and now we will be uh, extending it to the residue theorem. For in-depth knowledge of the subject, you can refer to the book from S. Chand Publishing. The details are given on this side, and link is given in the description box. So we'll make the statements for the residue theorem. the residue theorem so for the residue theorem let us say that some curve c is there some closed curve c is there and inside this closed curve c there are finitely many singularities let me say a b c and d so let f z be analytic inside inside and on c inside and on a closed curve c closed curve c except at finitely many finitely many singularities singularities a b c and so on so forth and the residues since they are the singularities so we can calculate the residues at that then the residues at a b and c are are a minus 1 b minus 1 c minus 1 and so on so forth then the integration then the value of the integral then the value of the integral of fz over the c over the curve c is equal to is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues the sum of the residues of at sorry sum of the residues at finitely many singularities at finitely many singularities so mathematically it can be represented as that this integration of fz dz over the c can be written as 2 pi i times sum of all the residues that is sum of all the residues let uh, this is a minus 1 plus b minus 1 Plus c minus one and so on so forth. We we this subscript stands only just for the notation for the residue which we have discussed in our previous videos, so you can refer to them. So uh, this can be represented as sum of the residues, sum of the residues at finitely many singularities, which can be written in terms of uh, summation that it is a. Minus n, where n is, or, or let us say it k, where k is from one to n. So, these these are the residues at finitely many singularities. So, this residue theorem enables us to find out the value of the integration if there are finitely many uh, singularities. So, this will be used to calculate this type of integration. So. we'll make it more clear by taking the help of one example so let us evaluate this integration over c 4 minus 3z so 4 minus 3z over z square minus z dz such that we will be given cases so here 
from the denominator it is clear that it has got two, two singularities one is at 0 and another is at 1. So, we will say that both the singularities 0 and 1 inside C and let us take this case 0 inside but 1 outside when we say 1 and 0 these are the values for uh, singularities that is z equals to 0 and z equals to 1 and third is 0 outside and 1 inside and fourth case we can take that both 0 and 1 are outside both 0 and 1 are outside. So, here we will uh, find out how to uh, use Cauchy residue theorem and then we will be uh, uh, you know recalling another theorem also that you will uh, come to know when we will be solving the question. So, it is it has got two singularities 4 minus 3 z over z into z minus 1 it can be written like this. Now, 0 and 1 inside C that means both are the singularities which are lying inside C. So, if this can be understood as a closed curve C then both the points this is z equals to 0 this is z equals to 1 are inside C that means they are the singularity. So, we need to find out the residue at both the points. So, we need to find out the residue at z equals to 0. So, residue at z equals to 0 will be limit z tends to 0 z f z. So, it is coming out to be z f z. So, limit as z tends to 0, it is 4 minus 3 z over z minus 1 and when we will substitute z equals to 0, it will become minus 4. Then, we need to find out residue at z equals to 1. So, we need to find out a residue at z equals to 1. So, for this we need to apply the formula that z is tending to 1 and it is z minus 1 f of z. So, this comes out to be limit z tends to 1 4 minus 3 z over z because z minus 1 will be cancelled out. When we substitute z equals to 1 it is coming out to be 1. So, the value of the integration 4 minus 3 z over z into z minus 1 dz c is coming out to be 2 pi iota and sum of the residues at all the singularities. So, it has singularity at 0. So, sum of the residue at 0 and minus 1. So, it is minus 4 plus 1. So, it is coming out to be minus 3. So, minus 3 into 2 pi i. So, it is minus 6 pi iota. So, this will be the value of the integration when both 0 and 1 is lying inside the curve C. Now, let us try to understand that what happens when 0 is lying inside but 1 is lying outside. When 0 is lying inside but 1 outside, you recall uh, the Cauchy theorem which says that if fz is analytic then the integration over c of that fz dz will be 0. Since now 0 will be considered as a singularity but not 1. If this 0 is removed then it will be called as the sing, uh, analytic function. Therefore, we will be calculating only the residue at z equals to 0 and that will be the value of the function 2 pi iota into value of the residue at z equals to 0. Similarly, when we are taking 0 outside but 1 inside, so 1 will be considered as a singularity of the function. Therefore, we need to find out the residue of the function at z equals to 1 only and residue at z equals to 0 will not be counted in this one because 0 is the singularity but the singularity is lying outside C. So, we cannot consider that we cannot find out the residue at z equals to 0 and that residue will not be calculated in this one. When both are 0 and 1, both the singularities are lying outside the curve C when we are lying uh, saying inside and outside. So, we are uh, of course, we are talking about C. So, when we say that both the singularities 0 and 1 are lying outside C, that means what? 
that our function will be called as the analytic function. When the function becomes analytic uh, within and on inside and on the curve C, we can recall the Cauchy theorem which says that then the value of the integration will be 0. Therefore, in this fourth case, when both the singularities are lying inside the curve C, then we will not consider this uh, uh, residue theorem because they are no more the singularity inside C. See, when we are applying residue theorem, it has been made very clear that if this is the curve C, then they should be the singularity inside this. This is A, B and uh, a, let me call it as A1, A2, A3 and so on and so forth. We have finitely many singularities. So, we are not bothered about the singularity which are lying here. Since when we are considering both 0 and 1 outside, Though they were, this derivative is becoming 0 at uh, this, uh, at z equals to 0 and z equals to 1, but they will not be counted for the, for calculation of the residue at z equals to 0 and z equals to 1 because they are no more the singularities lying inside the curve C. Therefore, so in case 4, when z equals to 0 and 1 are lying outside outside C, then we can say that then using Cauchy theorem, Cauchy Gorset theorem, Cauchy Gorset theorem, the function, the function Fz is analytic, is analytic inside and on the curve C inside and on C and therefore the integration of Fz dz will be 0 where Fz dz is nothing but 4 minus 3z over z square minus z dz is equals to 0. Therefore we have to be very uh, careful while considering singularities. We need to consider only those singularities for the residue theorem which are lying inside the curve C. We cannot take the sum of the residues for the singularities which are lying outside this curve C. So in this part of the video, we have covered the residue theorem and then we have solved one question for, to show that how the residue theorem will be applicable. We have taken four cases for this question in which there were two singularities of the function and we have considered four cases when one of the singularity was lying inside the curve C and uh, other was lying outside, then both were lying outside, then both were lying inside. So that's how four cases have been considered. For in-depth knowledge of the subject, you can refer to the book from Eschant Publishing, details of which is given on this side and link is given in the description box. Please do like, share and subscribe the video and press the bell icon for notification for upcoming videos. Thank you very much. All rights resolved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.